Here's an overview of some laryngeal and pharyngeal anatomy as it applies to deglutition. One of the first anchors I like to look at are the true vocal folds. You can see that they point forward like an arrow toward the face of the patient to help you orient. Now above and blocking much of the true vocal folds are the false vocal folds, or the vestibular or ventricular folds. And one more set of folds you'll look at, which they're pseudomonic to help you remember, are the airy epiglottic folds. So think of airy like a arytenoids, and then epi like the epiglottis. The airy epiglottic folds connect the arytenoids to the epiglottis. So now look at your tracheal rings below the true vocal folds. So all this area below the vocal folds is considered to be your lower respiratory tract, and the area above your vocal folds is considered to be the upper respiratory tract. You also have four important pockets in the throat, or actually two sets. So the top two between the base of the tongue and the epiglottis are the voleculae. And back here, you have closer to the upper esophageal sphincter, the piriform sinuses are often called just the piriforms. So the voleculae are higher and the piriforms are lower. And so between the voleculae and the piriform sinuses, the airy epiglottic folds form sort of a dam to create channels between the voleculae and the piriform sinuses. And this can be helpful in case something spills over the tongue into the throat because it creates lateral channels around the airway to protect it. But if you get too much liquid in the piriform sinuses, it can spill through the inner arytenoid gap and get into the airway. But thankfully, you have bunching of the airy epiglottic folds where the arytenoids rotate inward together and can help to protect the airway if this happens.